In an ancient age, in the scorching expanses of the deserts of the east, the children of Israel, under the courageous leadership of Joshua, armed themselves for an epic tale. Forty years of an exhausting journey through the Sinai Desert culminate in the arrival at the borders of the Promised Land. However, as they contemplate the horizon of the longed for land, they face a colossal challenge. Canaan, the longed for land, is under the rule of powerful and belligerent nations, the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Jebusites. The taking of this land promises to be a chronicle of epic dimensions, marked by grandiose confrontations. In this stage of trials, Joshua, Moses' successor, rises as the intrepid commander. The gigantic task of leading the Israelites in this audacious undertaking weighs on him. Walled metropolises, sophisticated combat tactics, and mysterious territory await them, testing their resilience at every turn. Faced with this panorama of doubts, unshakable faith in God serves as a guide, illuminating the path on this unpredictable journey. He anticipates being captured by a tale of countless twists and turns, where courage opposes misfortune and belief proves to be the mainstay. The account of Joshua and the Israelites promises to be an odyssey of unparalleled magnitude. Joshua, also called Hosea in Numbers 13 and 8 and also in 14 and 6, which was his original name, however, his name was changed by Moses in Cades. Hosea means to save, but following the Hebrew and Semitic practice of changing names to sanction a change in status or destiny, Moses, under the influence of the Spirit of God, gave the name to the eldest son of the tribe of Ephraim. He changed it to Yehoshua. With the name change came a change in his role and responsibility before God and the people of Israel. In the Hebrew canon, Joshua is the first book of the books of the prophets. According to Judeo-Christian tradition, this is the name of the successor to the leader of Israel, the prophet Moses. Joshua, son of Nun, from the tribe of Ephraim, was Moses' assistant during the 40 years of the Israelites' exodus from Egypt and their journey through the Sinai Desert. On a certain occasion when Eldad and Medad were filled with the Spirit of God and prophesying, Joshua asked Moses to stop them, but Moses did not listen and said, May all the Lord's people be prophets, and may the Lord send his Spirit about them. In Numbers chapter 13, we read that by order of God Moses sent twelve men to spy on the promised land. Among these twelve was Joshua, after forty days walking and observing the promised land. The twelve spies returned to the camp of the people of Israel and before of the entire congregation led by Moses and Aaron, report what they saw, heard, and tasted. Forty days later, while ten spies said it was impossible to conquer Canaan, only Joshua and Caleb presented a favorable report. This boldness and courage of Joshua resulted in that after the death of Moses, Joshua assumed leadership of the people of Israel. His mission was to lead them to the land of Canaan, which God had promised to Abraham, as recorded in Genesis 12 and 3. Canaan, as we mentioned previously, was a region inhabited by different peoples, including the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, and Jebusites. These people were formidable and hostile, which made conquest challenging. Joshua, one of the notable characters in the Holy Bible, faced several challenges during the conquest of Canaan. The biblical narrative makes it clear that Joshua was one of the greatest strategists in the history of humanity. The resistance encountered along the way tested Joshua's perseverance and his trust in God. Leading the people of Israel into conflict with approximately 30 cities in the land of Canaan during a military campaign to conquer the land that was rightfully their people. His ingenuity as a war strategist is evident in the way he commanded numerous armies under God's command to judge the Canaanite people who, among other barbaric acts, sacrifice human beings to their clay gods, including children. Joshua had a different approach from other peoples who invaded and dominated territories in antiquity, enslaving some of those who were defeated or demanding the periodic payment of tributes. However, for those who voluntarily declared worship to the God of the Hebrews, as did Rahab of Jericho and his family, could live with the Hebrew people without being molested. The campaign led by Joshua was to conquer the promised land, and to do so he often had to face bloody battles where people were killed. The destructions of the cities of Jericho and Ai are recounted in detail in the Bible, in the biblical book that bears the name of the protagonist of our story, and report Joshua's leadership in the conquest of those city-states. One of the best-known episodes is the Battle of Jericho. Joshua and his army marched around the city walls for seven days, until the walls miraculously fell. This victory demonstrated his faith and trust in God. After the great victory against the kingdom of Jericho, 
The time had come for the city of Ai, the second to be invaded, which was a much smaller kingdom than Jericho, a city also walled. But in the eyes of Israel, the battle against Ai was appearance to be the easiest for Israel, which was coming from the great victory over Jericho, but the course of the battle was different. Ai presented better resistance than Jericho, generating an unexpected defeat for the army led by Joshua. Israel and its large army went through a moment of instability and Joshua's leadership began to be questioned by some tribal leaders. Joshua handled the initial defeat at Ai with humility and a search for divine guidance. After the defeat, Joshua recognized that something was wrong and sought the face of God, questioning the reason for the defeat and expressing his concern for the future of the people of Israel. The cause of the defeat was revealed to Joshua as well as to all of Israel. God revealed to Joshua that the defeat occurred due to the sin of Achan, who had disobeyed God's instructions by taking forbidden spoils from the Battle of Jericho. Joshua acted promptly to correct the error. Achan was confronted, confessed his sin, and was punished, which led to the purification of the people and the restoration of God's favor. With God's guidance, Joshua adopted a new strategy for the battle against Ai. God instructed Joshua to set up an ambush against the city, which resulted in a decisive victory. In the second orchestrated attack against the city of Ai, Joshua set up an ambush behind the city. When he instigated the king of Ai to leave the city with his army to pursue him with the Israelites, Joshua had left a group of 5,000 men hidden behind the city, who invaded it at that time, and set it on fire. They then surrounded the king of Ai with his army, who only at that moment saw that they had fallen into a trap and were surrounded on both sides by enemies. The army of Ai was entirely defeated by the Israelites, but the king of Ai was captured alive and taken to Joshua. After this, the Israelites returned to the city of Ai and killed the entire population, not stopping until all the inhabitants of Ai were killed. According to the Bible, the total number of deaths in the city was 12,000 people. Then Joshua ordered the city to be set on fire, turning it into a pile of ashes. The king of Ai was executed after the total destruction of his city and was then hanged from a tree. After the victory, Joshua led the people in a ceremony to renew the covenant with God in the mountains of Ebel and Gerizim, reaffirming their commitment to obedience and worship of God. These events show that Joshua was a leader who not only recognized God's sovereignty, but was also willing to follow his instructions and correct mistakes to ensure the success of the mission entrusted to him. The Bible describes Joshua as a central figure in the leadership of the Hebrew people after the death of Moses. He is portrayed as a spiritual and administrative leader, someone who had a direct connection to God and used this guidance to guide both the people and the Israelite army. Joshua is also presented as a judge who resolved conflicts and a skilled military strategist, leading Israel's warriors into battle. The Bible specifically mentions the city of Gibeon, inhabited by the Hivites, one of the seven Canaanite nations. After the destruction of Jericho and Ai, the Gibeonites, fearing for his survival and impressed by the strength of the Israelites, sought out Joshua and Gilgal to ask for peace. This request is part of a more complex plan, as the Gibeonites used cunning to guarantee their safety in the face of the Israelite threat. The ingenious ruse used by the inhabitants of Gibeon was cunning and well-planned. The inhabitants of Gibeon, fearing for their own survival in the face of the Israelite threat, decided to use a stratagem to avoid destruction. They sent a delegation to Joshua, in the camp of Gilgal, dressed in used and dirty clothes, as if they had come from a long journey. The members of the delegation wore very worn and patched shoes, carried old sacks on their donkeys and brought old and patched wineskins, as well as dry and moldy bread. When they arrived at the camp of Israel, they said to Joshua and the leaders of Israel, We have come from a distant land to ask you to make a peace treaty with us. They claimed that they were from a distant nation and had heard about the power of the Lord, the God of Israel, and the victories over the Amorite kings. Joshua and the other leaders ended up believing them without consulting the Lord. They made a peace treaty with the Gibeonites, guaranteeing to spare their lives. Three days later, the Israelites discovered that the Gibeonites were neighbors and lived near them. Even enraged upon discovering the mistake, Joshua, demonstrating his fidelity to the pact, decides to keep his word. The oath made in the name of the Lord is inviolable, the peace treaty was kept, and the Gibeonites became woodcutters and water carriers for the entire community. Gibeon was a large city, larger than Ai, and its inhabitants were known as fierce fighters. 
In addition to no longer being able to expel the Gibeonites, Joshua had promised protection to the inhabitants of Gibeon. The other Canaanite kings learned of the alliance and decided to attack Gibeon to punish them for making an agreement with the Israelites. Joshua is informed that the king of Jerusalem had made a coalition with other Canaanite kingdoms and was heading to Gibeon to structure his base there for war against the Israelites. The stage is set for a conflict of monumental proportions. Five Amorite kings, Jerusalem, Hebron, Jarmuth, Lachish, and Eglon, join forces in a formidable alliance against the Israelites. A coalition that promises to challenge not just brute force, but also the resilience and faith of God's people. The numerical disadvantage is evident. The Amorite armies far outnumber the Israelites, and their military strategies are razor sharp. War chariots, knights, and orchestrated tactics promise to make this confrontation epic. For the Israelites, newcomers to the art of sedentary warfare, this battle is an unparalleled test. Their inexperience in Canaanite strategies and the absence of chariots put them in a vulnerable position. A crossroads where faith in God collides with earthly limitations. Joshua consults God to obtain an answer whether or not he should march against the armies that besieged Gibeon, and God answered him, and the Lord said to Joshua, Fear them not, for I have given them into your hand. None of them will be able to resist you. Joshua 10 and 8 Upon receiving this answer, Joshua and his army marched to Gibeon to defend it from attacks. And he traveled throughout the night with the aim of taking the enemy armies by surprise, and that is what happened. The Hebrew people, led by Joshua, pursued their enemies who, realizing that they were cornered, decided to announce escape. During the persecution, the Bible describes a miraculous event where God intervened directly, dropping large stones from the sky on the Amorites. This heavenly attack was so devastating that it resulted in more deaths than were inflicted by the sword of Israel's army. However, despite the divine promise of victory to Joshua, the text implies that the battle would not be won easily, requiring effort and persistence from the Hebrew people. The timing of the battle suggests tactical urgency, the day was ending, the sun was ready to set, and if night fell, the Amorites could escape persecution from the Hebrews as they had knowledge of the region and would know where to hide. At this critical moment, where many would give up on their purpose, Joshua, in an act of unshakable courage and faith, raises his eyes to the heavens. In an act of boldness, Joshua cries out to God, the architect of the heavens and the earth, asking for a cosmic miracle. His voice resonates on the battlefield, echoing the confidence of a leader who does not base his power on earthly strategies, but on the divine promise that sustains his journey. With eyes fixed to the heavens, Joshua raised his bold voice, Sun, stand over Gibeon, and you, Moon, in the Valley of Ijalon. Joshua 10 and 12 It is as if the commander of the cosmic elements is being summoned to intertwine with the history of men. Joshua, with his unshakable faith, dares to defy even the laws of nature in search of divine intervention. This is a transcendental moment, where one man's faith becomes the event for an unprecedented miracle. The battle is beyond human abilities, and Joshua confirms that only the creator of the universe can intercede in this chaotic scenario. The sun then stopped in the middle of the sky, and did not hurry to set, for almost a whole day. And there was no day like this, either before it or after it, when the Lord heard the voice of a man, because the Lord fought for Israel. Joshua 10 verse 13 and 14 In a twist that defies logic and transcends human understanding, the impossible becomes reality. The battlefield, enveloped in the dust of conflict, bears witness to something extraordinary. God responds to the audacity of Joshua's faith with an unprecedented cosmic miracle. The sun, which has followed its uninterrupted course for millennia, stands still over Gibeon. The moon, in its celestial dance, stops in the valley of Ijalon. Time, in its natural order, is suspended before Joshua's fervent plea. A pause in the symphony of the universe, an echo of the divinity that rules over all elements. This is not simple or astronomical climate change. It is the divine response to a courageous and impetuous request from a man who lives in dependence on God. The Creator, for a moment, suspends natural laws to intervene in the battle of men. The sun, which illuminates creation, stands as a witness to this supernatural miracle. It is a moment of reverence in the face of the extraordinary, where Joshua's faith meets God's direct intervention. The unimaginable becomes tangible, and the battlefield is flooded with a celestial light that goes beyond the suspended sun. 
a cosmic palette painted by the hand of the divine. The field of Igelin, marked by the miraculous suspension of the sun and moon, becomes the stage where human strategy meets divine intervention. The adversities are evident. The Israelites faced not only a numerically superior military coalition, but also the tactical cunning of the Amorite kings. War chariots, cavalry, and a favorable strategic position, the disadvantage is colossal. However, it is at this critical moment that unshakable trust in God emerges as a key to change. Joshua, far from relying solely on military calculations, confirms that true strength lies in divine promise and supernatural intervention. Josue's strategic analysis goes beyond battle maps and conventional tactics. He probed the depth of faith, confirming that victory goes beyond human abilities. Unshakable trust in divine guidance becomes the anchor that sustains the Israelites in the face of the storm of swords. And so we delve into the essence of this exceptional leader. More than a military strategist, more than a skilled commander, Joshua reveals himself as someone who brings with him the mark of intimacy with the divine. A fearless warrior, shaped in battles against the Amalekites, Joshua transcends earthly characteristics. His leadership goes beyond military skill, it is rooted in a deep faith, cultivated through decades of walking with God. Walking intimately with God was not just a title for Joshua, it was the very essence of his existence. From the days of the Exodus, where he served as Moses' right-hand man, to the critical moments on the borders of Canaan, Joshua carries with him a spiritual intimacy that sets him apart. When facing the adversities of war and diplomacy, Joshua does not rely solely on his abilities. He trusts in the voice that guided him through the wilderness, in the presence that he dwelt among the clouds of glory. He is the leader who, even in the face of seemingly insurmountable challenges, dares to ask for a cosmic miracle with the confidence of someone who knows the God who controls the cosmos. A man who, on his deathbed, passionately proclaims, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. A statement that resonates not just as a personal commitment, but as the legacy of someone who, above all, walked intimately with God. This story is an example of how, in the biblical tradition, faith and human action go hand in hand, with the belief that even with success guaranteed by a higher force, achieving goals still requires determination and hard work. It is a lesson that, even with faith in victory, challenges must be faced with resilience and continuous effort. Joshua's audacious faith and fervent prayers are keys that unlock the gates of miracles. We conclude that this is not just an old narrative, it is a call to our current reality. The faith that defies the odds, the prayers that echo in the halls of the divine, these are not relics of the past, but living treasures that can transform our journey today. Just as Joshua faced impossible challenges with intrepid faith, we are challenged to bring that same courage into our day. His story is not just a distant tale, it is an echo that resonates in each of us. Bold faith continues to open doors to miracles, and fervent prayers continue to attract God's attention. May this story inspire us to live lives of bold confidence, to cry out to God with a faith that defies limits. For, just as the sun stood still over Gibeon, divine promises continue to manifest themselves in response to our boldness to believe. May Joshua's journey lead us to a faith that transcends time, connecting us to divine eternity at every step of our own journey. And now I want to hear from you, how is your faith? Is it similar to Joshua's faith? Leave your comment below. Don't forget to like, share with your friends, and subscribe to the channel. Goodbye. Until our next video.